everyone, my name is Lina and I'm a customer success manager at MindMeister. Today I have the pleasure of showing you our new editor in MindMeister, which is really so amazing, it's really beautiful and super easy to use. Still today I'm going to go through the dashboard, I'm going to go through how to make a beautiful mind map, and of course also how to collaborate. That's part of why we love MindMeister. So what you see right now is our dashboard. I have a lot of mind maps because I am an avid MindMeister user, as you might be able to see from here. <laughs> um, so what I really like to do, and something that I would say is a major tip for all power years of, of MindMeister, is to organize yourself in folders. So as you can see here, I already have a couple of folders already. I have a uh, folder for my demo mind maps that I do with customers, I have some for my team lead stuff, I have a few templates, so I like to organize myself in this way. Setting up folders is super easy, you just right click, right -click straight in your um, dashboard and you can already create a new folder here. You can even make folders within folders, which is just super easy and a great way to stay organized, especially if you create many mind maps, sometimes several a day, like me, myself. What I also find really neat about the, the dashboard is that you always have the activities on the right hand side. So that means that when I'm collaborating with people, which I often am, in MindMeister, I'm able to see here what has happened since we last talked together, since I was last in the mind map. So for example, I can see here that um, Annabelle added something to my mind map tool training brainstorm, um, or that Anton, for example, added something to turtle dependent migration. So. I have some updates here so I can see always stay on top of what is actually happening within MindMeister. Um, my favorite thing though about the dashboard is probably our access to templates. So we already have a couple of templates here but if I press on the big blue uh, plus button where I can also create a new mind map, I can also decide to add something from a template. We have actually just recently added a bunch of beautiful templates that you can use. So I would really recommend you to take a look because we really went above and beyond or our marketing team went above and beyond on making some beautiful mind maps for you guys. Um, one that I personally love a lot is the Lean Canvas. So if I just open it up here, you can also decide just to preview it. But if I open it up here, you can already see uh, lots of beautiful colors, everything, how the lean canvas is typically structured. And we have tons of these templates. We really try to make it as easy as possible for you to get started with MindMeister. But today, we're not gonna be starting directly from a template. I would definitely recommend you to do this in case you're ever a little bit uncertain on how to handle anything. But today, I really want us to make a mind map together so you can really see how easy it is to even start from scratch. If I again press on the plus button, I can choose to make a new mind map. Today I've decided that we're going to take a use case which is easily adaptable and which you can change to whatever you want. So I'm going to use this for a meeting agenda. This is something that a lot of my customers are using, no matter if it's for a specific topic, for a shoe fee, as a brainstorm, anything like that. It can be really nice to prepare everything in MindMeister and use this as a basis for your meeting. So in this case, um, I would like to take an example which is a future launch. Let's say we're having a kickoff meeting, which we would like to hold. Everything that I'm going to be doing from now on is actually going to be uh, using my just my keyboard. So if I now use the tabulator um, key, I'll be making what we call a child topic. That means a topic which is one level below where you currently are. So in this case, I was in my main topic. So if I use tabulator, I make a first level topic. So for example, what I always think is important to have here um, in my meeting agendas is a date, time, and also location. Then from here, I can already start to fill it out if I already know this. In this case, I do. So I'm going to use tabulator again to make another child topic. So as you see, a lot of level down. I'm now going to fill it out. For example, 5th of August, today's date. I'm going to have it a little bit later today. So I'm going to put it as 1 p.m. And I'm also going to share the location. We have an 
great ideas room, which I think is going to be perfect for this meeting. And it's in the Vienna office. So I just fill it out like this. I'm just going to move a little bit so you can see what I wrote. Um, and now from this, I can start to make additional topics. So all I did here was really use um, shift again for 5th of August. I once I started to make um, sibling topics, as we call it, meaning topics on the same level. I don't use tabulated anymore. I use enter. But it's really easy. Let me show you again how to do it. So now I just use the keys, so up, down, left, right, to move around in my mind map. I'll just show you again here. Go to the side, go up to the left. Um, and from here, I would now want to make a sibling topic to the date, time, and location. The next point that I always think is crucial is to outline the participants. This is especially really important in case you ever have someone else who is looking at what did we do in this meeting, um, in case it's interesting to know, okay, who was exactly involved in this decision or in this brainstorm, who might we want to involve later on. This is something great. And again, all I did was just press enter and immediately I got into my sibling topic. Now from here I would like to make an answer, so a number of participants here, and I'm going to use tabulator again to make a child topic, and I'm going to add, so a project manager is definitely needed, I'm going to use enter just twice, and I can add a few more. So I could continue to to do this and continue to show you how to build a big mind map. But sometimes time is precious. Maybe you already have it outlined somewhere else um, and you don't want to have to put it all in again in your mind map. We understand that. We've got you. So due to that, we have created this amazing outline mode. You can switch to online mode in the top left corner, uh, sorry, bottom left corner. <laughs> um, if you go here, you can shift to outline. And here you already see what we've already outlined. So the date, time, location, and participants. Now I also already prepared the meeting outline in MySonote. I don't know if you know MySonote, but it's a great tool for note taking, for preparation, for outlining anything. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna copy here the different topics. So let's say I first wanna add in the agenda and I can just paste it in here and I already have it. Awesome. Then let's go put in some more information because I already prepared all this, so might as well use it, right? Um, so topics also goes straight in. And last but certainly not least, action items, very important as well. So I'm just going to mark that too and paste it straight in into my mind map. So from here, you're also able to make changes. You're able to move things around uh, using keyboard shortcuts. Um, we can definitely link, or we will link you a keyboard uh, shortcut article where you can read all about the different um, shortcuts that we have. I would now start to really format it. So making certain that it looks as beautiful as possible, but also adding as much information as possible. So for example, I can decide to change the colors up for each of my topics. This is just using our standard color at the moment, our standard template, but I can actually customize this in whatever way I want. So if I click, for example, on a date, time, and location, and move over to our sidebar over here, so this is really where you're able to do most things. It's always on the right-hand side, um, or you can also open it up directly on top of your topics by clicking on these three dots. So here you'll also have the exact same menu, uh, but I actually prefer to work from the sidebar because I love how you really have everything on one side and add your you're ready and you can use it for every topic. So let's say I actually don't want to just um, do the date, time, and location, but I would actually love to edit uh, several topics. That's absolutely not a problem. I'm going to mark several topics just using shift as per usual as you're used to and from other programs. And then I'm going to go over here and click on style. So for the style, we have lots of different options. First of all, we have the option to choose between different fonts that we have available, to choose a size for your text, so whatever it should be smaller, bigger, this can definitely be really helpful if you're having a very large mind map where you need to distinguish more between sort of different levels and how, um, how big your text is can be really helpful here. And you can also choose a text or a color for your text. Um, and here you would just choose, for example, um, 
for example, you can use a, an orange maybe. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Of course, with the blue, maybe less so. Um, so I can also choose down here um, a color for my shape. So that could be something that's white, something that's gray. So this is really doing the background. In this case, I don't love it as gray. I like it when it's transparent, so I'm gonna keep it transparent. But we also have this, um, the color picker, so you can really choose whichever color you might need, which is really easy to adapt in case you have company colors, anything like that. You can also choose the shape of your background. So if I just do choose the gray, even though I don't love that right now, <laughs> I can choose, for example, the the corners of my box, I can make it a little cloud, I can make it square, or I can also choose to just make it a line shape. That means that a line goes underneath it, which is this color. Um, but in this case, as I said, I really love it to be transparent, so I'm just gonna keep it uh, as it was before and make it transparent. We also have boundaries. Um, that basically means that it will color everything that you see, so everything you have collected in this case. So everything that's attached to date, time, and location will be marked inside a boundary. Um, and you can also choose to give this any color you would like, gray, blue, whichever. Again, I would love to not have a boundary. I really like the, the transparency of what you're seeing right now. So I'm gonna keep it like this. On top of that, we can also decide to just design the border. So before you really saw the big um, background color, but you can also choose, no, I think it's just a little bit of color by having a border could be really nice. You are able to add this as well. You can The border you can also really customize to whatever you think, so or whatever you like, so you can choose the thickness of the border as well as whether or not it's a dotted or dashed border. So you have also this, these options here. Um, and last but certainly not least, we want to give you as much customization options. So of course you can also choose how the line should look. So again, you can choose a color for the line. I really love the orange, so I'm going to keep with the orange. Um, again, you can choose the thickness of the line, whether it's dotted, dashed, or full outlined um, and you can then also choose here whatever you want straight lines or curved I typically like more curved or what we call dynamic but you are able to choose uh, straight if you prefer you could already see here once I click on straight you immediately see the change um, but I like it more dynamic it feels a little bit nicer for, for most for my cases at least awesome so now I've just shown you a little bit on how you can format your Mind map. In this case, I made everything orange because I think this looks really nice. You can see it looks nice and sleek, a little bit different than what we have for the other ones. Um, but you can also do this super easily with our themes. So we do have some custom themes that we've saved for you guys, which we really love, which is really easy to use. You basically just open up here and you can choose a color that you would like. So we have the regular Meister color, which is the standard one. Um, I also really enjoy the pastel one. I love the fact that it's a little bit more muted. Um, you can also use bubbles so that I see this a little bit more outline. So we have lots of options for what you can do here. I'm gonna keep it with the pastel. I love the pastel. Um, so it's super easy to just apply a theme and make certain that everything looks nice and neat without having to spend too much time on figuring out which colors match well together. So now I think I have a pretty nice mind map, but there's so much more I can do. Um, really the formatting of the text, the boxes, the background, is just one thing that you can add to your mind map. We also have um, pictures, icons, anything like this. So of course if you have your own library of icons or pictures, you're really welcome to use these, but I wanted to show you guys the icons that we have here in MindMeister because we spend a lot of time really customizing this and making it really easy to use. So again, here on the sidebar, I have the, the icon point here, so this is the little smiley face. Uh, it's a smiley face also because we do have emojis available, so if you prefer using emojis, you can add them here and use them exactly like you could an icon. In this case, I wanted to show you the icons. So for example, for the 
date, time, and location. I can either just scroll down here and choose one, but I can also search for one. So if, for example, here I think a clock makes sense, I can do this. And right now it uses smart positioning, which basically means that it takes what feels more natural or what is more logic for the system. For these first level topics, that's typically on top. And if I were to add something to my second level topics, it will typically add this on the left hand side. Now here I click on it and you can see it would turn it to the left hand side. Um, but I can actually choose this in whatever way I want. So in this case, I would prefer not to have one, so I can just delete it again. Yeah, just press remove. But here, just because we have the smart positioning doesn't mean you have to use it. So you can actually change it over here, away from smart positioning to, for example, the left. And you can see the size will also adjust. I'm gonna add this for all of our main topics because I think this looks a little nicer. So participants, I like this one. I'm gonna make it left. Um, we have agenda. I like the note here that works well. For topics, maybe some sort of discussion. Do we have it? Yeah, we have a discussion. Let's use this one. I love it. And then for action items, let's see if we can find a check mark. Perfect. Action items, we have them right here. And I've just aligned them to make it look a little bit nicer. And again, for the agenda, I think it look, makes a lot of sense that we also add an icon here. In this case, um, I would like to use some numbered icons. And we do have those. So if I just search for one, for example, the introduction is our topic one. And for two, I can view this super easily. Just searching it up right here. Or of course, I can also just scroll down where I locate them. And I can also add them. Um, straight from here, so here you see them. I think this is already looking pretty nice, so I'm very happy with what I have right now, but I actually still have a lot more information that I want to add to my mind map. Likely that's not a problem at all because we do have um, more options. So for example, for the future specs, we already prepared something um, before this meeting and we just kind of want to link it here so that people can reference it and find it in the future. On my sidebar, I have this uh, top icon here, which is called Actions. So for Actions, I have many opportunities here. I can add a connection between topics. That means apart from the regular connections, I can connect one topic with another. So let's say, for example, I am creating a connection here from Future Specs to maybe task two is gonna be about this. Right now it's overlapping a little bit, but that's not a problem because I can just grab it here and I can change it in whatever way I want. So I can move it around, I can change the color, I can give it a title, I can really do anything I want here. So just clicking on it, I can say, I think a more pastel color is gonna work a little bit better. Um, I can say that I want both of them to have an arrow line, so it's not just the future specs aligns to task two, but actually both of them belong together. So I can do this here. Um, and I can also, as I said, add a label. So then this could be um, task for future spec, for example, so that I have this clearly outlined directly in my mind map. Other actions that I can do and which I want to show you right now is, for example, the attachment. So with the attachment here, if I just click on add attachment, I'm able to either upload something directly from my um, from my computer, meaning usually just looking in through my files. But in this case, I actually have everything in my Note, so I'm just going to add it as a link. So if I go into my Note, we prepared this major product future launch overview where we talk about why it's this future, what are the customer requests that we had about this, future specs, so on and so on. So I can just copy this link and I'll paste it straight in here. Beautiful. And I now can already see this little icon here for the link and our attachment in this case. And if I just click on it, I'll be able to open it up straight from here. So this is also a great way to fill your mind map with information to make certain that you're all on the same page about what you have available to you guys um, and something I really love to show. 
We also have many other functionalities. So again, if you have your own images, you can add your images here, you can add videos here, you can really do whatever you would like. Um, you can also add notes. So in case you want to write a note to describe it, maybe you don't have a master note yet, but you are already have something outlined for the future specs. You can also add a note here really describing um, the, the issue. So for example, for a problem definition and goal, maybe I want to say here, uh, what was the problem for the customers? What um, What is the use case going to be? So just by adding this, again, uh, all I'm doing is pressing enter and immediately it's getting saved. You can also again see an, a little um, icon here where you can click on it, you can see the note. I can even pin it on my right hand side if I really want to, to keep it visible and not have it on the note, but I kind of want to have it on the side. I just pinned it and you can see I've been moving around a bit and it stays where it is. So that means I have it always within my vision and, and I can use this and I can just dismiss it easily by closing it on the X, um, making it really easy to, to decide how I, like to, how I like to see it. Now, something else that I also love to show and I think is really part of why MindMeister and generally all Meister products are so strong is that not only can we link them between each other, but we can actually create action type items directly from our mind map into Meister task. So for example, when I go in here, I have task one, um, and maybe let's say we have decided on what task one is going to be in at the meeting that we're having, I can go back to action items and I can assign the task. So when I click on assign, I might have to connect to my as a task the first few times, um, but in this case, I am already locked in, I've already prepared everything, and I can now look for my project. I can also decide to create a new project in case I haven't already, but in this case, I actually already prepared one, so I'm just gonna locate it here. There we go, the project future launch. And I can choose um, in which column in my mind to task project it should go into. So in this case, it's probably a completely new task, so it would go into open. So I just choose open here, and I can already choose to assign it. So right now I only see myself or I see unassigned, but once you're collaborating with other people, you can also choose to assign directly to them. They'll then get a notification, they'll get access to your project, and you'll be able to continue your collaboration directly there. Right now I'm going to leave it as unassigned because we haven't actually had the meeting yet, so I don't want to assign anyone to anything before we've all talked about it. Once I've assigned anyone, I also see again another icon in my mind map. This one is currently the unassigned icon. If I'd assigned it to someone, I would have seen our own little avatar. So from here I can also either reassign it, so directly from the, the, the icon in my mind map, and from the actions view, I can also open the task. So that means that if I ever am in my mind map and I need to open up the task, see how far along we are, I can do that. So that's some of our functionality, a lot of our functionalities actually. Um, and I think this is part of why MindMeister is such a great tool because you can really customize it to whatever you want. You can make it look however you want. And we have a lot of side functionalities and of course integrations with our own tools. Now that I've prepared this MindMeister or this mind map, I'm going to share it with my team members. We have lots of options for sharing, whether that is link sharing. And link sharing, what's really cool about that, you can use it to invite externals. So let's say someone doesn't currently have access to MindMeister, maybe they're an external user, maybe they're a customer, anything like that, you're able to share this mind map with them through a link and they can access it and if you've given them permission to also edit, they can even participate in your mind map even without an account for MindMeister. That's super cool. So if I go here onto the info button, well there's several ways to do it, so I can of course also just press invite here on the top right corner, but on the top left corner I have the information area. I just want to show you that here you can also click to share a link and with this link I can just copy it and then send it to whoever I would like. I can also of course invite participants. So in this case I just press invite and I immediately get a few suggestions for who I usually work with. In this case I would love to participate or work together with our product manager David. So I'm going to invite him straight here. I can even write him a message. Hi, David. Let's work together on this. 
and you can also send an invitation either via email or just directly to him in MindMeister. I'm going to send it to the email so that he knows that something's up. So I also want to show that you can actually embed and publish our mind maps. Let's say that you have a website where you like to show you off your mind maps, that you have an internal place where you collect all your information, like an intranet of some sort, you're actually able to do that. So again, I'm just going to go into the map info on the top left, and from here I can do the three top bottoms, uh, but I can do the three dots, and I can choose publish. So if I click on this, I'll first get asked if I really want to publish it. I can always change this. So in case I change my mind, that's not a problem. But if I press continue, I'm able here to see the public link, which is the link um, that anyone can use to access the mind map. And I can also publish it here in our public mind maps library. So that means we have a major library where you can see what other people are doing. You can sometimes even copy them if you would allow to. So let's say in this case, I call it part of a business one. Um, and I can either allow to copy and export the mind map into their own accounts, or I can also decide, no, I would, I'm would, i okay with people seeing it to be inspired, but I don't want them to make copies. And I can do that straight from here. But the sharing and embedding is a little bit different. So once I've published it, or I don't even have to fully publish it, but I have the link here to say sharing and embedding options. So once I click on this, I do need to have the share link um, enabled, but then afterwards I can have an iframe here, which I can embed anywhere. I can even choose the size of the iframe. And I can, for example, say I want to have the social sharing buttons, which is these ones up here, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. Um, I can also decide to show the MindMeister logo or to keep this hidden. Uh, I can show a link to the original mind map. So even if I have it embedded, I have a link where they can open it up directly in MindMeister. And I can also enable live updating. Meaning that, for example, if I'm presenting somewhere and I want people to be able to see it from their own pages, I can embed it in there beforehand and I can present to them in the meeting, make changes and updates, and they'll see them directly in there. It also means that if I have enabled editing for anyone who has access to the mind maps, anyone with the link, they'll also be able to add their own ideas, make changes, make comments, so on and so forth. So this is something that can make your experience with MindMeister super interactive. Now I'm happy with this. I'm going to publish it. I'm super excited to see it in the public mind map universe. Um, and let's say that now I really want to start collaborating. So I've showed a lot of functionalities, but one that I haven't showed you yet is commenting. So I already have a little bit of input on the potential roadblocks. So if I now click on actions, I can choose to do a comment. So let's say I'm writing a comment here. Everyone who, is, who has access to the mind map can see this, can respond to this. In this case, David would see it because he gets notifications about this. And he can add a comment, he can add a smiley, you can do whatever you want here. So also here you're directly able to communicate. So even if you don't, are, or you aren't using this in a meeting setting per se, you're still able to prepare to discuss anything straight from here. And one of the last things I want to show you is our versions history. This is a really cool functionality which ensures that no matter what happens in your mind map, not only are you able to see who made the change, when was the change made, but in case accidents happen, which we're all human, accidents do happen. <laughs> Let's say I delete something I'm not supposed to delete. I can actually restore it. I can go back and see previous versions, or I can also make a copy of it. So let's say we remove something, but we actually continue to work. And then later on, we found out that maybe this information was important after all. I'm able to make a copy and then see this again in another mind map. So the versions is again under the info um, area. So again, under the I here on the left, uh, top left side. And then I can go into versions. Once I see versions here, I ever see everything that's happened. So I see something that happened 20 minutes ago. I see when I originally created the mind map many, many edits ago. And if I choose one of them, because I'm curious to see how it looks, if I choose one of them, I'm able to see how it was before. So in this case, we see, oh, this is before I made any of the icons here for the agenda. It's before I wrote my comments, I added links, so on and so forth. Um, 
and let's say this is what I want, this is what I want to restore to, I can click on the three dots here, every single option has this, um, and I can say to restore this version, meaning I my mind map gets overwritten and I see this version now rather than the previous version, or I can choose to make a copy, which means a second mind map with this. This is a great way to make certain that no matter what happens, you always have what the information that you need and you will never lose anything. So this is just a few of the functionalities that we, I want to show you from my MindMeister. There's endless opportunities for how you can use this, for who you can collaborate with, and I hope you got a few ideas on how to get started with MindMeister. If you ever have any questions, you're always welcome to write us on our support page, or if you want to talk with our sales team, you can also submit a request for this. Thank you so much for your time, and I wish you a lovely day. Have fun with MindMeister.